Thank you, Emmett. Thank you, Tink, for having us here. So the Genentech Roche Ophthalmology Personalized Healthcare Program is based in meaningful data at scale and advanced analytics. And we have the very easy goal to predict and prevent vision loss. And we're gonna start by supporting personalized therapy. And by that, I mean we want to minimize treatment burden while we're still making sure patients are uh, treated early enough in a way that we prevent before irreversible vision loss occurs. This whole program begins and ends with the patient in mind, but we're going to start acting in efficient research uh, and development. So our prototype algorithms may potentially help us design smarter and faster clinical trials with better chances of success. Once these tools are better developed and become deployed, then we hope to help physicians with personalized health care, also improving uh, patient access to new therapies. This is a huge undertaking, and we understand the trouble we're putting ourselves in. But we're really excited because it depends on the algorithm development strategy and the potential intended uses with increasing complexity that we're going to reach our ultimate goal of uh, prevention. We're still in very early stages of this endeavor. We're currently training our prototype algorithms using legacy data. But we're already partnering with external collaborators to gather larger, uh, real-world perspectives data sets, and we're going to start soon to refine and validate our algorithms. We understand that to deploy meaningful tools, we need to collaborate soon also in beyond physicians with regulators and payers and all the stakeholders in this complex ecosystem. Our program is going to be based in addressing high unmet medical needs in ophthalmology, and of course, we're going to start with age-related macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy in its vision-threatening presentations. So we know that part of the big problem nowadays is with screening, and the challenges are related, first and foremost, in identifying disease. And this is one of the examples coming from our prototype algorithm in diabetic macular edema. And we know that OCT is the standard of care, but we know that screening is uh, difficult because not all patients or all centers have access to OCT. For example, telemedicine centers, great majority of them do not have access to OCT. At the other hand, color fundus photography is so easy to acquire, you just need a smartphone to get an image like this. And while we do use color fundus images to screen for diabetic retinopathy, we know we cannot tell whether or not there is diabetic macular edema, and even let alone measuring it. However, an algorithm can. So as my previous uh, colleagues described already, artificial intelligence, it's going to be a new tool in the hands of physicians to better to make better clinical decisions in no context we see a physician removed from this new uh, scenario. When you move to machine learning, then a physician can use their skills to handcraft programs that then become smarter as they are exposed to new data. And deep learning allow unsupervised learning, meaning the whole interpretation can occur without human intervention. And that's the technology we use. We started to assess the potential for deep learning to measure macular thickness in patients with diabetic macular edema. We inputted raw images from one of our legacy trials in a convolutional neural network. And we also used for this project an interesting approach called transfer learning cascade. That strategy is powerful to make deep learning feasible in a real world setting. And what happened in this project pilot, our network first learned how to recognize natural images, and once the software was marked, enough, we made it uh, specialized in understanding fundus photos. This study had several limitations, but the initial results seemed promising. So you can see on my table how the deep learning model was successful in identifying OCT equivalent macular thickness measures from color fundus pictures. I want to call your attention to the area under the curve, and especially the values when we used high color fundus photos, um, uh, well curated and, and integrated. You can see our uh, reliability gets up to 97 percent. Because, again, we want the tools to make the uh, clinical decision by the physician better, we want them to show what the algorithm is really seeing. We don't like black boxes. And here in these attribution maps, the physician is able to assess the biological plausibility of these outputs and make clinical judgment out of it. 
those are also very interesting um, hypothesis generating tools. Uh, Genentech Roche also has uh, comparable efforts in age-related macular degeneration, and as examples, our prototype algorithms as predicting anti-VGF treatment response and outcomes, or some of our prototype algorithms assessing geographic atrophy occurrence and progression. So in summary, we believe our ophthalmology pipeline, our rich longitudinal legacy data sets help us to collaborate with the retina community and bring along in this journey other expert leaders in the field. Thank you.